The 2009-2010 Erie Otters came into their 14th season of Ontario Hockey League play, hoping to build upon the success of last season's group that put the Otters into the postseason for the first time in three years. At the start, there would be some growing pains with the loss of some key figures. The Otters started the year without Yaroslav Giannis, the Slovakian sensation. The netminers started the year at the AHL's Norfolk Admirals after being drafted by the Tampa Bay Lightning. But a more surprising player out of the mix was Ryan O'Reilly, as he was on the opening day lineup for the NHL's Colorado Avalanche, becoming the first second-round pick since Patrice Bergeron to crack the opening day lineup immediately following his draft year. The losses of those two players were not a deterrent for Erie in their season-opening five-game road trip that saw the Otters break even with a 2-2 0-1 record. The Otters were greeted with a team record home opener crowd of 5,601 fans that almost saw the Otters pull off a victory, but the London Knights put an end to the party with a 5-4 win in overtime. What followed was a five-game slide for the Otters until an Anthony Luciani hat-trick paved the way for a key 5-4 win in a shootout October 17th against Owen Sound, the first of Luciani's three hat-tricks for the season. The following week, the Otters traded for offensive defenseman Derek Holden from the Peterborough Peets, and the steady blue liner proved to be a valuable asset through the remainder of the season with the Otters, as he would leave Erie defenseman with 11 goals. Breast Cancer Awareness Night, October 24th, raised over $5,000 for cancer research, but the main event had fans talking for the rest of the season. As Otters newcomer Ramis Sadikov took on Sue's Robin Leonard in the first goalie fight for the Otters in nearly a decade. However, the Otters couldn't quite shake out of their early struggles, and at the end of October, they were four games below 500. But on November 6th, the tide started the turn in the Otters' favor. Yaroslav Giannis was returned to Erie by the Admirals and made a season debut the same night against the Niagara Ice Dogs. But his return would not be the big story, as the Otters exploded for a 9-3 victory in their highest offensive output in a year and a half. That game was particularly noteworthy for the uniting of Zach Torquato, Greg McKegg, and Mike Cazola, a line that would become one of the top producing units in the OHL throughout the remainder of the season. With the return of Giannis and the formation of one of the league's most productive trios, the Otters finished November with a 7-2-2 mark and a record above 500 at 12-11-4-1. The Otters held their second annual teddy bear toss December 5th against the Sarnia State as Captain Torquato scored the goal to send 3,500 bears flying onto the ice of Tulio Arena en route to children's hospitals in the Erie area. The game would need to go into a shootout as Luciani scored the game winner in the third round to give Erie a 3-2 victory. Up and down play would be the story of December as the Otters remained at 500 through most of the month. After posting a fantastic 36-day performance against Saginaw, Yaroslav Giannis received the call of a lifetime on New Year's Eve as he signed a contract with the Tampa Bay Lightning and was headed back to Norfolk to resume his career in the AHL. That left the goaltending duties to young Adam Wood, the Otters' eighth-round pick in the 2009 priority selection. Against fellow 16-year-old net miner John Chartrand, it would set up a wild offensive showdown. The game featured a score that was tied five times and two lead changes, as the score was tied at six going into the third period, with two goals by Matt Patton leading the charge. From that point, the game started to become more defensive, and the Otters nearly saw it slip away as Andrew Agazino was on a shorthanded breakaway, but Wood made the save of the game to keep the score tied. With 7.13 to go, Cazola scored the tie-breaking goal off a deflection, and Andrew Yogan tallied the eventual game winner with 3.02 remaining as the Otters grabbed an 8-7 win on New Year's Eve. The Otters' offensive barrage would become a theme for 2010 as the Otters kicked off the calendar year with home victories against Guelph and Plymouth by scores of 7-5 and 7-3. Following the week, Zach Torquato became the first Otter in two years to win Player of the Week honors after tallying 10 points in four games from December 28th to January 4th. But maybe their most memorable game of the year didn't end in a victory. On January 9th in London, the Otters found themselves down 7-2 with 13 minutes left in regulation. The comeback started on a fluky goal as Tyler Hostetter dumped the puck off of a Knights defender past Michael Hutchinson to start the rally. The Otters then started to find their groove as goals by Luciani and Holden made it 7-5 with five minutes remaining. Desperate to find offense, the Otters pulled Ramis Sadikov in the final minute of play. Yogan scored a power play tally with 32 seconds left to set up a frantic finish. Now behind the net, Cazola with 10 seconds to go, tries to put it in front. Luciani fanned on the shot with an open net. And now Turquano turns around, that's blocked. Here's McKeck, he scores! Greg McKeck scores as time expires. Can you believe it? The Otters, five down, have tied it at seven. 
with .4 seconds to go. The Kegs goal gave the Otters a hard-earned point, but they were unable to get the win as the Knights won in the shootout 8-7. That game proved to the OHL that the Otters would not be an easy opponent. The following day, Otters general manager Sherwood Basson pulled the trigger on a trade deadline deal that sent goaltender Adam Kershane and forward Brett Appio from Sarnia in exchange for draft picks. Both players made an immediate impact in their debuts at Tully Arena against Brampton January 15th, as Kershane made 30 saves and Appio scored his first goal as an Otter in a 4-2 victory. That was followed up by a 4-3 win against their former Sting teammates the following night. The Otters now found themselves five games above 500, but unfortunately fell into a five-game slide with four of those losses coming on the road. The streak was snapped January 29th in a 2-1 shootout win over Niagara, and what followed was a stretch in which the Otters won 10 out of their next 13. The most exciting of those games came at Tulio Arena February 5th, when the defending champion Windsor Spitfires came to town. Tied at two going into the third period, the game remained at a stalemate until the top line took control. Torquato scored with 8.45 remaining to break the deadlock, and the keg followed up three minutes later to boost the Otters' lead to 4-2. To two. Although Justin Shug briefly gave the Spitfires hope with 3.21 to go, Gazzola was able to complete the scoring for the top line as his empty net goal sealed the deal with 55 seconds remaining, giving the Otters a hallmark 5-3 win over the Spitfires. The Otters then proceeded to win three out of their next four on the road, which included shutouts by Adam Kershane against Mississauga and Belleville. Those performances earned Kershane the OHL's Player of the Week award, becoming the first Erie goaltender to win the honor since TJ Achetti in 2003. The Otters finished February with a solid 8-4 record, highlighted by blowout wins against Owen Sound and Ottawa at Tulio Arena by scores of 8-2 and 7-1. Another Otter would receive league recognition as Greg McKeck joined Corey Pecker to become the second player in team history to win OHL Player of the Month. McKeck collected 21 points in 12 games during the month to win the award. The Otters ended the regular season on a high note in front of 5,304 fans in Erie as the Otters exploded for eight goals against the London Knights. The barrage included a five-goal second period in which Anthony Luciani collected his third hat trick of the year to guide the Otters to an 8-3 win on their way to the postseason. The Otters drew the defending champion Windsor Spitfires in the first round, giving the team a tough task. Game one belonged to Windsor as a four-goal second period gave the Otters a 6-2 loss. Game two in Erie would be a different story. The Otters kept the score close throughout, but Taylor Hall led the Spitfires to a 3-1 win and a 2-0 series advantage. Back in Windsor for game three, the Otters were off to a sluggish start as the Spitfires grabbed a 3-0 advantage heading into the second period. Erie was able to get back on track as goals by McKegg, Holden, and Brett Cook tied the game at three. The teams traded goals 26 seconds apart to make it a four-all contest, but Windsor Zach Cassian scored with 10 seconds remaining in the period to give Windsor back the lead heading into the third. All scored what appeared to be the dagger for the Spitfires with 8.50 remaining, but the Otters continued to fight. John Zedlowski took advantage of a misplay by Philip Grubauer to put the Otters within one with less than five minutes to go. And with 3.02 left, the Otters were able to tie the score again in front of a shocked Windsor fan base, thanks to Mike Cazola. Unfortunately for the Otters, their joy was short-lived. Eight seconds after tying the game, Stephen Johnston scored the game winner to give Windsor a 7-6 victory and a three games to none series lead. Although all hope was not lost, the Otters knew that coming back would be a difficult task. As prior to the postseason, just two OHL teams came back from 3-0 deficits to win the series. Unfortunately for Erie, the Spitfires proved to be too much to handle in Game 4 as the Spitfires came out on top in a 5-1 win to sweep the Otters out of the postseason. Despite not advancing in the postseason, the Otter season was one of many triumphs. Zach Torquato notched a career high of 93 points for the season and set an Otters record with 62 assists for the season. He finished a stalwart Otters career second in points behind Brad Boys with 269. His linemates Greg McKegg and Mike Cazola each set career highs with over 80 points in the season, and McKegg's great play in the regular season earned him a spot on Canada's under-18 world championship team. McKegg and Torquato each represented the Otters at the 2010 OHL All-Star Classic in Kingston. Florida native Andrew Yogan continued to generate interest from scouts as he represented the Otters at the 2010 CHL-NHL Top Prospects game in Windsor. Many other Otters reached new heights with Sean Zidlowski, Anthony Luciani, Matt Patton, and Tyler Hostetter all shattering career highs. Also important was the development of the Otters rookies. 
As the year continued, ice time grew for David Broll, Brady Austin, Jeremy Gotsman, and Jordan Cacimilio, a sign that the Otters' 2009 priority selection could shape up as one of the best in team history. Adam Kershane stepped into the void left by Yaroslavianis and was recognized as one of the OHL's top goaltenders in the second half of the season. His backup, Ramis Sanikov, became one of the league's flamboyant personalities with his postgame celebrations and flair in his goaltending style as he readies to become the Otters' number one goaltender in 2010-11. Acquisitions Derek Holden and Brett Appio also proved that they could be valuable pieces for next season as Holden was a top goal scorer amongst Otters defensemen and emerged as one of the top two A defensemen in the league. While Appio contributed with more than his trademark physical play and pitched in with solid defensive work through the remainder of the season. The Otters will retain a majority of their roster for the 2010-2011 season. And with the progress of veterans and the emergence of rookies to go with a bustling crop of prospects ready to play, next season could be the year that the Otters find themselves amongst the best in the Ontario Hockey League. player beset by appendicitis last season, he made the most of his opportunity this season in playing all but two games for the Otters, but he made his biggest impact in the Erie community. The check-in line forward accumulated more than 60 hours of community service in 2009-2010. Most of his time was spent at Erie Shriners Hospital for Children, where he helped staff members with various tasks and comforted patients who were preparing for surgery. In addition to his time at Shriners, the Woodstock, Ontario native was also involved in school visits. The 2009-2010 Erie Otters Steve Nimigon Humanitarian Award winner, Matt Pat. A second round pick from the small town of Bob Cage in Ontario, this player split time at forward and defense this season. His exceptional size and extraordinary skating ability could position him as a top prospect for next year's NHL entry draft and he showed continued improvement throughout the course of his rookie season. The 2009-2010 Erie Otters Rookie of the Year, Brady Austin. Although an NHL team didn't draft him last June, this player worked his way back from injury to earn a pro contract with the Philadelphia Flyers in September and proceeded to work harder this season with the Otters. The Pennsylvania native notched a career high of 26 points in 59 games, which included two five-game point scoring streaks. The 2009-2010 Erie Otters Bastion Award winner for dedication is Tyler Hostetter. A mid-season acquisition from Peterborough, this defenseman left his hometown and quickly fit in with a veteran group of Blue Liners in Erie. Despite not scoring a goal in his first 90 OHL games, he got on the board early in his Erie career and continued to chip in offensively, tallying 11 goals and 16 assists in 54 games with the Otters. He also showed tremendous poise with the puck and was rarely out of position at all ends of the ice. The 2009-2010 Erie Otters best defenseman, Derek Holden. This player transformed from a defensive forward into an offensive two-way dynamo overnight, leading to a whole of four honors awards this season. After an 18-point rookie year, he had the most significant improvement of any player in the Ontario Hockey League with an 85-point campaign. He also stayed out of the penalty box with just 32 minutes as he continued to be a key contributor on the penalty kill. An OHL All-Star with Zach Torquato, he was also an All-Star in the classroom. His breakout season led to a selection on Canada's under-18 World Championship team and a rising stock in the upcoming NHL entry draft. The 2009-2010 Most Improved Player, Scholastic Award, will Castro Benini three-star selection and most sportsmanlike player, Greg McKay. Had he started his career in Erie instead of Saginaw, he could have been a serious threat to break in many of Brad Boy's offensive records. However, his three and a half season career as an Erie Otter is still one of the finest in their 14 year history. And last season was one of the best individual performances. 
The captain collected career highs of 31 goals and 93 points, and his 62 assists broke a 13-year Otter single-season record in an OHL All-Star season. He completes his Otter's career in third with 105 goals and second with 164 assists and 269 points. The 2009-2010 Erie Otter's leading scorer and player of the year, Zach Torquato. Don't let his small stature and 13th round OHL selection fool you. He's become the steal of the 2007 OHL priority selection. A gritty player who's not afraid to take on physical competition, he showed that he could put the puck in the net with regularity. Last year's Otters Rookie of the Year shattered last season's totals with 36 goals and 50 assists as one of five players to suit up in every game of the regular season for Erie. The 2009-2010 Erie Otters most determined player and most valuable player, Mike Cazola.